Good morning YouTubers, it's Luke Brooks again. Hope all is well. Today I'm going to do a bit of a tutorial on how I start the seeds. Now these video clips will be short but they will be joined together. At 6.30am because the sunlight is not up yet, helps me with my eyesight. I can see better in the low light conditions. I'll get to it. Well, first of all, these are the pots that I use. It's a tray of 40, and they're rather deep. You can obtain these most likely online, but these are actually sold to me through someone I know. Please excuse the rooster in the background. It belongs to a friend. So these are a few variations of pots that I use. This one here in particular uh, is regrowing from the stem because they were grown very close together. This one here, I've been bending over the top a little bit, this part here, just to allow those shoots to grow out. And this one here has got multiples coming up, but um, haven't done much with that one yet. So today we'll get the seeds planted and we'll get them into the, my little makeshift hot houses made out of bathtubs with plastic over the top. And this is the material I use. It's cocoa peat mixed with compost and it's sieved through to make sure that there's no um, hard stuff in there such as uh, wood chips, stones, anything like that get taken out. Even root systems if I'm reusing it, which I don't tend to do. I do put the dy dynamic lifter in it uh, in order to give them a food source. But this stuff is very light and fluffy and covers the roots beautifully. Now the problem with that is it can fall straight through the tray. So what I do in order to stop it from falling through the tray is I've got a little bit on the on the tray below it, on the bread crate below it, and then I just do this quickly. I've also got a tray below, so if any does fall through, it'll get caught. And then I use two fingers just to push it down very firmly to the bottom, which will create a cap that will stop it from falling through. Uh, because this stuff's quite fluffy, I wet it down a fair bit and it will pack down nicely right at the bottom. Most important thing when planting these seeds is to make sure that they have a solid base. They're designed to fall onto topsoil in amongst leaf litter and all sorts of fallen debris, including the pods that they come from. And when they do that, that all breaks down and creates a mulch, which is then uh, warmed up by the sun. And it also retains plenty of moisture so with these seeds, once you get them in the potting mix or the cocoa peat, it's crucial to keep them moist for at least five to seven days. And you should have some coming up within 14 days. Now I won't bore you while I'm filling these up. I've given you a bit of a demonstration. I'll just keep pushing it down with two fingers all the way around the circle to make it nice and tight. And I push down fairly hard too. I've got to make sure that it's a it's a good tight fit. And um, yeah, it holds everything in place for when the seeds go in. I also only put them about a fingernail depth. So my fingernail's there, I hold about there. That's where I'll put the seeds. So about that depth is what I want them to be when I put the seeds in. Same with this one here, when I push it down, it's about the fingernail depth. Same with this one here. If there's too much cogo peat, I'll just scrape a little bit out. Cogo peat, I'll just scrape a little bit out and move it into the one next door. So once these are all packed down nice and tight, I'll get the seeds started and I'll do another video on those and I'll record that for you. All the best. Okay, so that's taken about 10 minutes. We've got it to our desired depth all there is now is to add the seeds i'll get to that shortly 
Okay, so here we are preparing the seeds. I've just boiled the kettle. I have my bag of seeds here with a container in it that holds around 500 seeds when it's full. So there's approximately 500 in that. We'll just place it here. And then we will add the boiling water. Not a lot of water, just a bit. I generally just shake it for around 30 seconds. What that does is it softens the shell of the seed. The movement helps get a, uh, a good join of the, a good covering of the boiling water over the seed. I normally stir it, but I've only got one hand at the moment. So that's approximately 30 seconds. Now I'll just add cold water to make it so as I can handle that without getting burnt. Okay, now I've made the water a little bit cooler. I can actually touch it now. It's still lukewarm. It's not cold. But yes, I'll go and show you how I uh, put these into the trays. Okay, now that we have the tray set up and the seeds ready to go, I simply grab a spoon. Oh, it's never as simple as you hope it will be. But I get approximately four or five seeds per scoop. And I simply place them in to the container. I've got too much water in this, that's the problem. Remove some of it. Makes the job a little easier. cooperate with me today hmm. I should have grabbed a water spoon I normally use a soup spoon because a little bit of water on the spoon as well as the seed makes it a bit easier they tend to spread out better when you put them into the tray but five to seven seeds are fine. They work quite well. And later on, once these grow, I'll show you how to separate them quite easily. These will take about three months before they're sellable. And in that time, I have to just make sure they're kept moist, make sure they're kept warm, but I don't want them to stay wet. So that's the hard balance that comes with these trees is to keep them moist but not wet if you get them too wet they will rot the roots then they can die very very quickly but in saying that I have had some that have been bone dry and have still survived for a, a number of days they prefer to be dry than they do to be wet so the best thing to do that I have found is either a hot house or a similar system to what I use with the bathtub with the plastic over the top to create your own little humidity dome. If you can keep the moisture levels at about probably 45%, it doesn't have to be real wet, but just damp and warm. These trees will thrive. Now a lot of people have had trouble propagating these seeds, but in my prior video, 
you can see a batch of seeds from last year that I did exactly what I'm doing now and you can see that my strike rate was pretty much five out of five in most of the trays there may have been one or two late blooming seeds but they did come up eventually now there's 40 holes in this container and I can fit 500 seeds in here out of that I expect around 340 to grow you're never going to get a hundred percent success rate you get the odd seed that's a little bit green or just didn't um, develop well enough on the tree I try and keep out the small seeds because they really don't like to grow real well at all we're almost there So for those of you who are interested by any by any chance is I'm legally blind I have about 18% vision left I have optic atrophy they call it it's inoperable and incurable and it's basically a whitening in the optic nerve so I will because it's degenerative I will eventually go blind but even when I'm blind I'm still going to do this because I'm in it for the animals, I'm in it for the people, and I don't want to ever see anything suffer severe drought conditions again. Now, there's only a few left in here, so we'll start to pour them in once the water goes. This will just get four or five in that one. Four or five in that one. So there we go. We've got a number of seeds in. If you've got a clump section like this, I just spread them around a little bit with my finger. If you've got them too clumped up when they grow, they tend to um, create an umbrella effect in the pot which means it lifts up all the seedlings lift up the um, soil that you put on top sorry about the wind it's just come up it's now about 8 a.m and we're into mid to late summer now it's certainly more autumn weather than it is summer this year year 2021 has been pretty strange so far it's been rather cool and wet there's quite a few in there there's about eight or nine in that one but they will still hopefully grow so we just spread them out as much as we can i'll get that out of the way and then all i do is just get cocoa peat I just do this I don't actually pack it down at all I just fill the remainder of the hole but I leave it loose so as the seed can pop up without a problem if you pack it down the seed can become compacted and it won't grow as well so the main objective now is just to get them covered and I always use moist soil when I'm working with it, or cocoa peat, or whatever I'm using at the time. The main thing is to keep it light and fluffy, because these are designed to grow in, com in composted conditions under the tree. In saying that, I've seen so many seedlings just not make it when they grow naturally. Some people have said that they spread, but I in the five years that i've been working with these trees a lot of the farmers that i've talked to and even people that have used them as hedging say that they might get one rogue seedling grow 
every two to three years. It's not that major. And most of the time that's just because birds carry the seed more than anything else, but I haven't actually seen any birds carrying any seed pods or anything like that around. So there we go, that's our finished product. And I'll show you the setup that I have with the with my little greenhouses shortly. Okay, so here we are. This is the bathtub that I've covered with plastic. There's our tray of seeds that we've done. And I'm going to put in an ice cream container of water in there also. Just to help with the humidity for the first 24 hours. So these trays actually fit in these bathtubs beautifully. So it's a little bit hard to film and do this task as well. But I can fit four trays in there quite easily. Just put our ice cream container of water in there also. We'll tuck that under. I'll probably weight it with some iron droppers or something soon. Again, apologies for the wind, but that's how I do it. Another method that I have been trying is this method here, but I have very little success with open growing. There will be a number of these come up, but there's already a number that have died. So it definitely pays to have the plastic on and keep it humidity, humidity levels correct and you will be much more successful. And also it does not pay to leave plants near a fence line where the animals can get to it. My mule has had a go at this one. She absolutely chowed down on it. That was my fault. It'll grow back, it'll be fine. Even though it's completely stripped, I'll take another video of this one in about two weeks and I'll show you all the new growth that'll come off the stems. So that's about all we have time for. Here's a few photos. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please like and subscribe and share please very much appreciate it love these trees best luck with your projects